bounty is two times more absorbent. So one roll of bounty can last longer than those bargain brands. So you get more life per roll. Bounty, the long-lasting, quicker picker-upper. <laughs> What's going on, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys had a great week. Y'all know I had a great week. This is what I wanted to say. But that's what I said once. So my mom is not having a great week, but we're gonna make sure that you know she feels better and everything because she had a mishap last weekend, which kind of made me upset. So again, when y'all seen that video on Sunday, like I was over it, over about a lot of stuff. But um, so yeah, um, I guess she will camera when she's ready to come back to camera now. Um. But please make sure y'all start this video off by clicking that thumbs up button. Also, make sure that you share this video to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or wherever you share our videos. Shout out to everybody that retweets the videos and also shares them. We'll be posting to Facebook. On Facebook, we have the uh, Scorpion Show page and my page. Thanks to those that share the videos. Um, if you did not know, this Sunday, October 19th, is the Philadelphia AIDS Walk. It starts at 9 o'clock and it should be over like around October 18th. I keep forgetting the damn date. I can't get that date locked in my head. October 18th, which is this Sunday, starts at 9 and it should be over like around 10 30, 11 o'clock. The walk is very fast. So if you would like to do the AIDS Walk with me, meet me on the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum at 8 30. I'm not going to leave the steps. Until 9 o'clock. Now listen, if you want to make sure you don't get left, please write me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and let me know that you're going to be doing the walk with me so that way I can know how many people are expecting to be there. Some people wrote me on Instagram today saying that they would be there. So, you know, after we do the walk, we can walk to somewhere and go get something to eat and then that will be, you know, the end. And, um, if you are free, if you can't do the walk, I know it's going to be cold, but don't do the hell up and let's get the hell out there and walk. Now, if you're free on Sunday, McHale's Church is also having their 91st anniversary at St. Joseph Baptist Church at 54th and Vine. Service starts at 11 a.m. and food will be served afterwards. But don't come there just for the food. Come there to get your blessing first. And then, okay. Anything you want to add on to that? So we hope to see you all both out this Sunday. Also, I will be in L.A. Halloween weekend. I will be there that Sunday. I want to do a brunch. Um, nobody wrote me on. That fly is getting to my goddamn nerve. That one fly. <laughs> oh, my God. That one freaking fly. So I'll be there Halloween weekend. And, um... I want to do a brunch that Sunday, that's November the 1st. Um, some people wrote me on Instagram about some good breakfast spots. Let me know so I can pick a place so we can go and have a little meet and brunch, you know, get together for that Sunday. Um, so yeah, that's enough of the announcements. Let's get into this video. Um, on Tuesday night was the Democratic debate on CNN. And with Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, Jim Webb, Martin O'Malley, and who's the other guy? Lincoln Chase. That's why he has got to go. That's why he has got to go. Come on! <laughs> Here you go. Oh my, and then that phone is ringing. Uh-uh, something has to get it. Here you go. Sit down. Something has to get uh uh-uh, we're not doing this today. Here they go. So, uh, see, so yeah, that's why I need my fly track back up. Oh, all of them got fly. Where are they coming from? I don't know. I don't know. I think it happens every time, you know, when it starts to get cold outside, the flies always rushing to somebody's house. No. Yes. No. Mm -mm. No. Yes. Well, you know they ain't getting in, in here. Through here. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know where they're coming from. They didn't just want flies. There's some flies flying in here. 
Yeah. That's because they're keeping that door open. That's what it is. And they're trying to get out of the cold so they're coming in where it's born. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's just a fly nightmare. Flies, flies, flies. So, what was the, so what was the debate? So, um, I watched it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was going to be boring, but it was pretty damn good. You know, everybody would just say, oh, this day going, they're not going to attack, attack each other. They're going to be so friendly. But they got on each other when it was necessary. And, and um, you know, they, some of them agreed. Hillary was shaking Bernie Sanders' hand when he was saying, I'm not going to quench an email. Because, I mean, I understand it's a big thing, but, you know, Republicans like to make this a big time thing about these emails. I wanna know about other things besides what is in Hillary Clinton's emails. I wanna know about the other stuff. I wanna know more about the big guy's situation. I don't wanna just be talking about those emails. I wanna know what she knew, what she didn't know. That's what I would rather know for her to discuss and why and, and can and can we as the American people see her as trustworthy and not as a liar. Not about no goddamn emails. But I love how they way they talk to on gun control. I didn't really like the Black Lives Matter question because a lot of them don't. They look at Donald Trump. And I think that to say Black, black Lives Matter, okay, that, Facebook, y'all have to change that. Y'all have to change that because it sounds like I'm in an airport. It sounds like I'm in a goddamn airport. Black Lives Matter and do Black Lives Matter, those are two separate situations. When you want to say that, all lives matter, including black lives. Let's just say all lives matter when it comes to that. But when it comes to black lives matter, black lives matter is get the fuck, get it, get it, get it, get it. Damn, you missed it. Oh, yes, you did. It. Oh, oh two shit. It was two. That's fine. Yeah, I'm trying to go outside. Okay, now I'm going to get one out. But that's fine. So, yeah, I'm getting irritated. Yeah, so, black lives matter is a movement for black people that's being attacked by these police officers that we need to make this stop and remind officers that Black Lives Matter. Officers, from the videos that we've seen, they have been treating African Americans different the way they would treat their own race or other races besides being black. The first thing they couldn't do when they see that you're black is pull out a gun or shoot you and ask questions later without valuing someone's life. And I am mad that no candidate discussed it in that manner except for Bernie Sanders. Like Bernie Sanders, he was on point with his answer, and um, you know, Hillary died, everybody died the question, one of them really didn't want to, what was his name, I can't remember who, but he didn't really want to, um, it was Jim West, the he one didn't want to answer it, minutes. Oh, oh, he's a bitch, he got to go, yeah, he, I wrote him off, and we said, this was the Lincoln, Lincoln, oh, whatever his name is, he, he's going to, I wrote them both off, because, one was just complaining. The other one was just, um, he just wasn't, he just wasn't there for me. And, and he switched too much, and then when he lied, when he's like, oh, when I came to office, oh, I voted for this because, um, I took my hair to my dad. I said, what the fuck, your dad has got to do with you? And you just signing off on shit? Right. What else? You could have came up with a better lie than that, okay? It was a horrible life. At least they like, this is what the people were telling me, or, or this is what I was getting phone calls about at the time. It's nice like, you know, I'm sure they're not going to go back and check that. It was, it was just very, it was very entertaining for me. How did you feel about it? The debate was, um, I actually fell asleep upon probably about half an hour before it went off. I just was like, all right, you know. Because to me, it just was a lot of, like you said, I think what really threw me off with the debate was the Black Lives Matter. Excuse me. When the question was asked, it was a very sim simple, straightforward question, and none of them seemed to answer it to my liking, other than Bernie Sanders, like you said. The problem with these candidates, Republicans and now I see Democrats, is they are trying to, naturally, all lives matter. We all know that. But for this particular issue, we're speaking of black lives. Do you feel and agree that Black Lives Matter? Why is it so hard for candidates who are running for president of the United States to say Black Lives Matter? Why is it so hard for them to say that? 
naturally, I think the way I just put it, you could have easily said, you know what, Don? All lives matter. Yes, they do. But for these situations that have been going around in this country for the past two, three years, longer than that, we need to step forward and say that black lives also The rule books tell you where to start and where to finish. But that's not the whole story. What are you going to do in between? What do you bring to the game? And how you move it? Because there's always a finish line. And you can cross it. Or you can own it. What are you made of? What's your epic finish? need to step forward and say that black lives also matter because the justice system has been treating black lives as if they don't matter. The corporate world has been treating black lives as if they don't matter. It's just, it's not even just people, black black men getting shot up by police. So it's black men and women getting shot down when they go to a job interview. Simply because they're black or simply because their name sounds better, according to Ray Luzamon. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing that's going on in this country. And I would like for a candidate who's running for president to be able to say out of his or her mouth that black lives matter. I really, 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 really want Joe Biden to run. But for some strange reason, it's, it's, getting, it's getting closer and closer to that deadline to where, you know, I think by the end of this month, it's like it's going to be too late for him to, you know, sign those papers, fill out those papers and run. But I would really like, the reason why I want Joe Biden to run, because Joe Biden is one of those straightforward type of guys. He's going to tell you how it is, he's going to tell you how it feels, and listen, if you like it, you like it, if you don't, you don't. Joe Biden, what I, what I get from him is, he is someone that you're not going to get no pussy for him. You're just going to get... It is what it is. He's not going to do that politics stuff. Bernie Sanders is the same way as we've seen the other night. He ain't going to do that either. And I like people like that. One of the things I've noticed about, um, because they, I was watching CNN yesterday, and they were talking about how Donald Trump, one of the people on there, he was a Republican uh, strategist, whatever, he was saying how Donald Trump was the star of the Democratic um, debate. How? Not be well, yeah, this is what said. Not because... <laughs> Not because Donald Trump was mentioned or, you know, but because during the debate, Donald Trump was tweeting. And he was, I guess he said that he was retweeting more um, of the comments than actually doing the tweeting. And he said that Donald Trump, during the Democratic debate, gained over 127,000 new followers on Twitter to Hillary Clinton's 25,000 new followers on, on social media. Which goes to show you that Donald Trump no matter how you feel about him, is a very, very polarizing figure, okay? One thing that I like about Donald Trump, one of the things that I like about him, of course I don't want him to be president, but one of the things I like about him is Donald Trump, whether you like what he says or not, he ain't afraid to say it. He's going to say how he feels. And I wish that some of these other candidates were a little bit more like him. This is why Donald Trump is surging in the polls, because people are looking to this man who's just not afraid to say how he feels. Donald Trump is saying what a lot of those Americans who are voting for him are saying behind closed doors. And because they don't want to say it openly, because they don't want to seem like they're bigoted or racist, they got somebody who's willing to say it for them. And so they're loving it. They're loving that they got somebody who's saying that these Mexicans need to stay in Mexico and they need to this and we need to build this. They're loving that and they're getting a the light from that. I wish we had somebody like that on the Democratic side. Not a derogatory candidate, but a candidate who just speaks their mind in a truthful way and you say, you know what, I like. And then another thing, Donald Trump is somebody that, they don't read no teleprompter. He's somebody like a Jocelyn Hernandez. You can't script him. You just can't script a Donald Trump. You can't script him at all. And that is something, Donald Trump, believe it or not, he's going to be in this in this race for a good while. He's going to be in this race until a good, for a good while until something big happens. Then it's going to be like, bye-bye Donald. Do I believe that he'll be the Republican nominee? No, I don't think 
computer for public analysis. But I think all those other Republicans should take a note from out of his notebook when it comes to handling the media. That's another thing. Donald Trump is not afraid to talk to the media. He's not afraid to talk to men at all. He sees the cameras, he's running straight to the cameras to talk to them. And that's what people like. They like somebody who's not afraid to talk to them. They like, they like people, they like candidates who's going to speak his or her mind. They like that. They don't like somebody who says, well, you know, well, this, that, and the third, and now let me get back. No, they want somebody who's going to be honest and truthful. With the Donald Trump's like, fuck that telephone. Look, this is how I feel. You don't like it, so what? Who cares? It's just all a bunch of attention for Donald Trump. It is all a bunch of attention. It's, just a, it's a bunch of a, attention for Donald Trump. It is a game, but it's working. Donald Trump is leading the polls all of all of these other politicians. Donald Trump is not even a politician, but yet he's leading over these politicians. So what does that tell them? If this man who's not even a politician is leading over, then maybe you should take a hint. Maybe you should be a little bit more, I'm not saying being ignorant like Donald Trump, but I mean you should be a little bit more straightforward like he is. I think people should be straightforward, but... When it comes to how you feel about a lot of things, he will never be president. No, he won't be. He will never be president. He won't be pre I just think that this is all just this is all a big game. That's that's just how I feel about it. And yes, I think it's I think you should be straightforward and mean what you say, but he's just ignorant. Well, yeah. why is he leaving? I don't know. I, they, they, they have an X Men. I don't think any of us have been ever pulled on who are we voting for? So I don't know. No, I don't know, but they're not polling us because we're not voting for him. They're polling people who are who are Republicans. Why? He, well, this is these are Republican polls that they're doing. I think at this point, Republicans are desperate to get anybody. Of course the they are. Of course they are. And he is not going to win. And he, he's not. It's nothing. There's nothing presidential about him. when you watch this debate with the Democrats. No, that was presidential. From what? From Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. I like the Martin O'Malley guy, but he has too many. I don't see presidential on Bernie Sanders. He has too many. Um, that's just your opinion. Yeah. But he has too many. Listen, he doesn't seem trustworthy to me when I watched them. And I didn't like some of the things that he was saying, but I found some likable. The other two guys that Jim Webb kept up there. Oh, is, if they give me time to talk. Bitch, chime in. Something Martin O'Malley did was he chimed in even when he wasn't even part of the question. And that's how you get noticed because you have something to say. Not when it's your time to speak. Oh, because I'm only giving 30 seconds. Come on, man. Speak. Say so But Donald Trump, he's, he's, just, uh, um, he's just an entertainer in this thing. And he's leading. But it's not. It's, it's only going to take him so far. Yeah. But until then, Donald Trump enjoyed the ride until the rules fall off. Right. And that's but, but, but listen to what I'm saying, y'all. This man is doing something that is... Donald Trump is 38% in the pool. You know who comes in after Donald Trump? Uh, the black guy. Ben Carson. Yeah, you know black. what he's at in the poll? Like 29%. 18%. 38 percent CNN just did it last night. 38 to 18. So this is CNN's poll. Yes. But what I'm saying is... Oh, what I'm saying there's is... There's too many different damn polls. Yeah, well, there's always going to be too many different... Everybody has a poll. The Washington Post has a poll. The New York Times has a poll. Everybody has a poll. But what I'm saying is Donald Trump is leading in all of these polls. I'm not disputing the fact that he's an entertainer and that he's ignorant. I'm not saying that, that he isn't at all. We all know he's ignorant. We all know he's an entertainer. But what I'm saying is he's doing something that the rest of them aren't. And that's why people are paying attention to him. That's what. That's why he's leading in the poll. Not only that he's being boisterous and speaking his mind, but he's actually talking. He's talking and people are listening. These other candidates, half the time, you can't even remember some of their names. You're like, wait, who? They're running for president? Because they're not making any type of splash. Like, you have to make a splash. You have to make a splash in order to be noticed in this, in this game. And at this time, Donald Trump wants to be noticed now. Because this is the time where... In a few months, they're going to be doing um, early elections in certain states. And so, you know, Donald Trump, he wants to become the nominee. And so, Jeb Bush, for Jeb Bush to be as... About <laughs> exactly. It's, it, that, that's the point that I'm making. Someone like Jeb Bush should never be trailing so far behind Donald Trump and Ben Carson. Like, Jeb Bush... Your name is a name that everyone should be talking about. Your father was president. Your brother was president. You were governor of the state of Florida. Like, come on. And you're trailing behind Donald Trump? You know what? I don't really think that I mean, this is all a setup 
from the Democrats to get this White House. It's something in my mind that well, who's setting up who? Is somebody? I really think somebody is paying Donald Trump to do this, to act like this. No, he's not. No, I, I really just let this listen. I just think this. I think it's somebody paying him to do this, to just be this way, because the Democrats are going to get this White House. I don't know who. It could be Hillary. It could be Bernie. The way the people reacted to Bernie and Hillary, it was crazy. It's going to be a dead heat between them two if Joe Biden don't yeah. jump in this. But, but you know what's so funny? Because Donald Trump has said, and you know people have found out, since since this race has started, he's like, I haven't had to pay for any type of anything. Why? Because the media is coming to me now. And so therefore, I don't have to put out any type of ads because... That is my house speaking and I'm talking to the media because they're coming to me. They're not even worried about the other people. I'm telling you, all you other candidates out there on the Republican side, y'all need to step your game up. Because two months from now, it's it's too late for this. It, it's, no, it's not too late. It's still early. It's not too late. You, we haven't even come to uh, an ele- uh, the first the Iowa caucus and all that yet. So it's not too late. You need to step your game up. You really need to step your game up because what's going to happen is... Y'all gonna be embarrassed because what's gonna happen? Donald Trump is going to somehow, you know, be eliminated from this race, and then y'all gonna be scrambling trying to get behind a candidate that you really don't want to support. Don't have me remind you guys of 2012 when Mitt Romney. I said on this show a, few, a year before that that Mitt Romney would be the nominee, and he became the nominee. But we all later found out that the Republicans really didn't want Mitt Romney to be the nominee. They really wasn't backing him like that because it was a lot of issues that he had did and that he um a lot of things that he had done in the past that was more leaning a liberal side than a Republican side. Like for instance, this Lincoln Chafee guy, you're never gonna be a Democratic nominee. You were just a Republican a few months ago. Big question about that. He's just you, you know what I mean? Like you you, you guys have to Get it together. Because once Donald Trump is gone, the Republican, the Republican Party is going to be scrambling to try to get a candidate, and it's going to be a candidate that they really don't want, but they're going to have to support because that's what you do. You, you stay facing, you support who's there, even though you don't really care for the nominee. So I need y'all to get it together. I really want Joe Biden to win because I think Joe Biden would bring a little more to this race than just Bernie and Hillary. Because truth be told, the other three can just forget it. They can just forget it. They really can't just forget it. It seems so weird watching the debate last night because it's like, why are the other three up here? Yeah, but you know what? It wasn't that bad, though. No, it wasn't that bad. They talked about that gun control. When they also discussed gun control, I do think that there is something that should be done about it. Like, I get tired of people bringing up, oh, he voted for this back in this time. And they did that. Times change. Every several years, your mind changes. Oh, it was fine this time, but now that you're wiser, no, I shouldn't have done that, or I shouldn't have voted for this. It doesn't matter what somebody is voting for back then. And the first thing they want to call you, oh, you're a flip flop. Oh, you're a flip flop because you this. Oh, you're a flip flop because that shit gets boring. I do want somebody or a president to come up with something for gun control. No, nobody is saying everybody get rid of guns. But the way you get a gun, there should be stricter um, stricter laws on how to obtain a gun. I do believe that. Because anybody can get any crazy person who can go get a gun without being evaluated and they shoot up a school or, or, or try to shoot up the White House or just try to shoot up the mall. Mm-hmm. Bitch, you go to work, they shoot you at your Anywhere you go, you're getting shot at, man. They're shooting at you on the motherfucking highway in the church. At church! But you don't think something should be done? And want to say, oh, if you had a gun, this wouldn't have happened. You can have a gun on you still if your head blown off. I don't understand what people say that. Come, we should yeah. the teachers. Why? Is there going to be a full blown shootout yeah. in the classroom? And the teachers don't need no goddamn gun in the classroom. As sneaky as these kids is a great the motherfucking school, they shoot one of the students. Oh, well. You know, yeah, the teacher with the hat. Yeah, yeah. The teacher's yeah. fault yeah. because they that somebody got shot. And excuse me, they fight the motherfucking cold. <laughs> they fight the kids bad as hell. 
<laughs> they already think that Kobe the teacher gonna have lunch with her in the room if the buddy's sleeping with her. Or, or that, or the teacher not gonna have sex in the classroom in the class. And we've heard all of those stories before. So don't act like white hair. Yeah, not a word. Now I'm not even trying. No, come on. I'm telling you. They had that before. They didn't know these came out of school. Yes, I've heard about it everywhere. Yeah, they're doing it. Them gym locker rooms, what you think they're doing in there? It's the court right there, they're right there. Okay, we're not going to record. You are nasty. Brush card users. Bitch, <laughs> first of all, why are you signing up for the rush card and not with your Logan McGrath? <laughs> I don't, I don't get that at all. What's his name? Russell Simmons? You let Russell Simmons talk to you again in a rush car. He's not going to call me. No. Now listen. Just because you get the rectum positive, you get the rectum positive at your man. Would you have had to know? Never. What they say for that hush money? You never know. But they say somebody one of the Republicans made three million dollars. Woo! funny. Thanks, give me some money. Right. <laughs> I won't tell shit for three million dollars. <laughs> yeah, you can give me a little bit of that. Ah! Russ is for real. Russ is for real. Russ is for is for real. Listen, for all those that got a rush card, Chad. You don't have Cause we don't have it. <laughs> Everybody's rush card balance is zero, and it's been down since Monday. People got phone bills, gas bill, water bill, cable bill, electric bill, internet bill. All these bills out here. Some people want to go take their date on a date, and they can't because they have no money on their rush cards. It's just and then when you try to call, you don't get an answer. You send an email, you don't get nothing. It got so bad to where Russell Simmons had to make a video explaining to everybody that he's sorry about the rush cards getting shut down. And we see these commercials all the time with prepaid debit cards saying, "Oh, because you don't want you don't want your bank to uh, get tired of paying all this extra money when you when your account goes into overdraft." One of my accounts went into a goddamn overdraft because I thought I paid something with a one card and it came out the other account. And I don't never use that bank. And it was like, bitch, yes. And I didn't have to call it end of this video. But to prevent things like that, I don't need no prepaid debit cards for that. Because the situations like this, and you don't know which bank got your money and who's doing what, where. Yeah. And how can you get, um, do you even get like, um, I don't know what's the word called when you get the, do you get interest in everything? Which are, no, I don't think so. So I wouldn't use the rush card, but I feel sorry for people that do use the rush card. They're Russell Simmons fans, or they found somebody, you know, to put their money on the card and think it was okay. It's not okay. I feel sorry for y'all. But when your cards get back on, what you do is you take all of your money out of the rush cards accounts and go to your bank and go get a damn bank card and get direct deposit and get a check for it. To keep your money in your account safe. Because I've never heard of a bank shutting down and losing their money. And then go days without contacting you and letting you know what's going on. Well, it happened during the Great Depression. Shit. Well, that was 100 years ago with the 1920s, the 1930s. It actually happened 86 years ago. October 1929. That was still 100 years ago. Years ago, 1950. All right, because so, I don't want to make nobody that's watching our show old. Still old. Don't do it. Today. You ran it off this 90s, <laughs> which isn't 100. But anyway, yeah. I get your point. It was a long time ago. A long time ago. And it was bad. It was bad. And, and a lot of people kept them in their home. They were good. They were mad about them keeping that money under their goddamn mattress. So, my thing is, my mattress. Because it'd be going about the time I pay that <laughs> Wait, oh, mm -hmm. So, you know, sorry for the first card girl. Yeah, and you know what? Speaking of money, I think that people our age, if you already don't have one, I think that you, you should be looking into a 401k or a Roth IRA because when we turn 65, we ain't going to be no Social Security. Hell, Social Security is going out the window as we 
be. Okay? So we need something to make sure that we fall back on. Don't be relying on your pension and all that. You need to start a 401k. Or if you don't have a 401k, a Roth IRA. You can uh, go to your bank if you have a bank to see how you can sign up for a Roth IRA. Your job or whatever can help you with the 401k. But please make sure you have either one of those. Because I'm telling you, when you turn 65 and you go to retire and you look at those, first of all, I don't yeah, even retire at 65. Yeah, days. okay. I don't even know how some of these senior citizens live off of seven and eight hundred dollars a month. I just don't know how they do it. But God bless them. And it's a shame because sometimes they have to determine whether they're not, they, they don't pay food or pay some of their bills. It's really, really sad. It really, really is sad. But I'm telling y'all, when we turn 65, you have to keep your fingers crossed because, crossed because Social Security is going to be a thing of the past. Mark my words. You got probably thinking, oh, that's 35 years from now. What would that be? You know when President brought out um, Social Security? This was... Social Security had to be like a... 40s and 50s. Yeah, I'll say Jim. You're yeah, actually no. very close. Or is the 50s? You're very close. Or is the 60s? No, you're close. A lot of people don't like it because it gets really wild here. Sometimes the planes don't fly, the ferries don't sail, but that's just part of it. The same is if you can see Ireland, it's going to rain. And if you can't see it, it's already raining. If it's rain, it's good to get. If there's no rain, there's no whiskey. <laughs> the Freud is from the Norse name. It means a hollow by the bay. More or less, whiskey is made here the same way it was made 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. in all of Scotland that's still tax her own feet. We still do our own floor maltings. There's only seven distilleries in all of Scotland still do that. We're one of them. Traditional floor malting in Lafroy. It's completely different. We have to plow the floors to get the grains growing. If we didn't turn the grains, the grains would mat and the temperature would rise too quickly and destroy the enzymes. So you're turning the shovel over and the grains are going through there and cooling down. It's very important that we take our time in the early stages of the potting process. After the grains have been germinated five, six days, we then transfer the grains into the kilning vessel. <laughs> Once the kiln has been levelled, we head down to the peat furnace. What we really want is as much smoke of that peat as possible. The smoke from the peat fire, the peat reek as we refer to, makes its way up through the grains and the grains absorb the smokiness, which is where Lafroy gets its characteristic flavours from. There's lots of things that make up the 10 year old and one of the main ingredients is the warehousing. The warehouses sit by the sea and they get very heavily influenced by all of the elements that come in. You cannot make Lafroy spirit anywhere else, it's just a freak of nature. We mature a whiskey on oil, we don't send any to the mainland. So that salty, iodine, kind of seaweed flavour that you get is all matured here. You can definitely taste the sea in the ten-year-old.
very close. Who is the fifties? You're very close. Or is the sixties? No, you're close. You're close. The forties. The forties. So was it? I mean, shit. Franklin Roosevelt. I thought he died. Didn't he die in office? Yeah, but that was forty-five. Okay. I said you were close. Social Security came out back in the nineteen thirties. Okay. During the Great Depression, and um, yeah, it was a, a way to help those people who were disabled senior citizens, you know, to help them. Because before then, there was no such thing as social security. You know? You lived off what you had. And you, you know, in the end, I mean... So start saving your money. Start talking to your, um... Your banks. Your banks and your job. And make sure that what you did in your bank, your job can match it probably like 50%, 40%. Yeah. Depending on what your company is. Yeah. But we don't give that out in the square picture. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so Lamar Odom. Shit. Now listen, I told you I don't want to talk about no sad stuff. But I'm not gonna talk about this sad way. We all know when we all heard about what happened to Lamar Odom. You know, our prayers go out to his family and his children and to them, hoping that he pulls through this. And something that I'm not liking, the owner of the Bunny Ranch, or whatever ranch that um, he was found at, he's doing all kinds of interviews. And he's an interview with Bunny Ranch. He was talking about Lamar owed a man $75,000 to be with these girls, and he took all these uh, herbal Viagra pills, and he wasn't on drugs, he wasn't on none of that stuff there, but he was drinking. It, it was just a whole lot. Who's to say? I don't know what it was. It could be those pills. It could have him, him being on drugs. I don't know what it is. They said that they found cocaine in his system. Oh, I'm sure it's a whole bunch of stuff in his system. And I do feel bad for him, but something you can, as, as an owner, I would not put my client's business out there. Because if I was your client, I'll be finding another one, another place to go to where I can get for following a lawsuit. <laughs> I hope you do file a lawsuit. We can't file a lawsuit, he's unconscious. Well, maybe it's family or his cat. I don't know. Bro. Because that's the fame of his character. Well, it's not, well, it's. Listen, he's sure, putting his right. personal button business out there. You're not supposed to be doing stuff sure. like that. Yeah, sure. I need you to get that out. Sorry. <laughs> so, yes. Go ahead. Because, what was I going to do? I was getting ready to say something about um, about telling his business to pay him the camera. No, I wasn't going to say anything. But there was something about I lost my train. Go ahead. So, yeah, even even doing all of these interviews, TMZ. When yeah, that's what I was going to say. Why are you even doing interviews? You know what I mean? This all happened this week. Why are you even talking to anybody? You should be keeping your mouth shut. You should be letting Lamar Odom, when he comes through, God willing, let him do all the interviews. Why are you even talking? The only people you should be talking to is the police. You going to Wendy Whoop, Wendy fucking talking to her by his height. Talking to her please. Her. Of all people, Wendy fucking Wood. That's what you want. To, that's what you choose to talk to. You need to be keeping your mouth shut and just talking to the police when they ask you important questions. Okay. All this telling people what he was doing and what he was taking and how he was taking it and who he was with. It's nobody's business. It's no one's business. But once he comes, once the Lord, God willing, he comes through, he's going to know that everybody knows his business. Everybody knows what he was doing, who he was with, and how he was doing it. Because the owner of this brothel decided to come out. And tell all his business. And I don't think, man, he ain't really got no just about to get clean and sober up. I hope. I hope he does. I hope yeah. he does. If he comes out, God willing, that he, this be a wake-up call for him. This be a major wake-up call for him. Lamar Odom, at this point, is knocking on Death's door. No, he's not knocking. He's banging on Death's door. Okay? And if Death's door has a screen door, he can already open the screen door and he's banging on the front door. The main, main door. Okay? That's the door he's knocking on. Okay? And I have a feeling that there's somebody actually walking to that door to open it up for him. 
Okay? Lamar Odom needs to get it together. Another thing, people, stop bringing Khloe Kardashian into this. She has nothing to do with this. Her and Lamar Odom are not together. They haven't been together for a few years now. She has nothing to do with this. The last time I remember, she was trying to help him in certain situations with his drug habits. And if I can recall, she has nothing to do with this, okay? I'm sure Chloe is devastated, and I'm sure she's there with them and his family. So stop making it like the Kardashians are somehow, in, like, I hate that I'm even mentioning this because it just makes no one's right. Yeah, but people are talking as if somehow she's the cause of his, his downfall. She doesn't know about his downfall. He was downfalling, falling while they were to get hell. He was cheating on her with his fake breath. Remember that episode with Kim Tolan's first thing? Yeah, she told him she's a Chloe Tolan. I don't know about I don't know about Oh, yeah, you don't watch that too. No, it wasn't even the Kardashians. I think it was Lamar and um, Chloe. And Kim Kim was trying to do it. Because Chloe said he hadn't been to the dance in a while. And he said his first thing, and everybody kept saying he's like, oh, they're not this one. They were saying that on the show. Yes, on the show. That's, That's what we like, You don't talk about what the hell we do. And Kim was very sincere. You know I left them, but you know, he Oh my god! Well, his first thing is first thing. And they were talking like this on the show. Yes! <laughs> huh? Did you not even make a say? Yeah. I want to get more. But Kim Kardashian says that <coughs> fake is not funny. It's not funny. So look. Stop laughing. Master P decides that he wants to talk to TMZ. Because TMZ stopped him. And he was saying that Kobe is fake. That Kim Kardashian, the whole Kardashian family, all fake. Uh, because where was y'all when Lamar was walking where he's walking? One thing is this. When somebody is going through what they want to go through, no matter what you may do to stop them from doing something, they are in control of their situation. You can you can tell them anything you want to tell them. You can do all the things. But when a person wants to get help, they will get the help when they are ready to. Not when you're ready for them to go get that help. And that's the truth. It don't matter who you are. That person has to want to get help. So you can do and say everything you want to say, Master P. But where were you? And you were such a close friend, or your friends were, well, where were you? I, just because you didn't rest his bad side and everything, you know, is, that, is it fair for us to say that you didn't care? Or you don't care about him because you're not there? Chloe Kardashian is his wife. I don't care if she's estranged. I don't care. Bottom line, that's the wife. So she should be there. She, I'm sure she cared about him. She loved him. But sometimes you do have to leave people where they at. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. And if it's meant to be, and if it truly is meant to be, they will come back. Mm -hmm. Or the, if they, they, they go through their situation and fix it. But I wouldn't want, if I, just because I have a bad relationship with someone because I do drugs, and they stop messing with me, that they just let me die by myself, if I'm going to die, I would want you to at least be there for me. Be there, praying over me and everything. And not a way like, okay, well, I knew that was going to happen to him. No matter what you may thought the resource would be, you don't do that to nobody. So, Master P, I, I would just need you to just be quiet and shut up. And shut up and stop speaking to people. Talking about because if my wife, if I was going through that, my wife came and her lawyer came, that wouldn't be fake. I mean, that wouldn't be real. That would be phony. Yeah. You were still her husband for all of those years. You are the father of her children. She might talk like she might not like you, but deep down, I know she got to love you if she gave you all of those kids. And it's not just for money. Y'all knew each other for a long time. I think they were high school sweethearts. Come on now, man, if you don't do that. So yeah, I'm done. Lamar, we hope that you get better, and I hope that nothing bad happens this weekend. And Jesse Jackson, shut up! <laughs> shut up! He went straight from the debates to the goddamn hospital. Now they said he was only there for three minutes. He times that by ten and said he was there for 30 minutes. <laughs> and that Lamar condition is improving. <laughs> shut up! Who said that he was there for three minutes? 
to the doctors and stuff. And he wasn't here for that long. Yeah. Because if he, he's in the he all came in there, he prayed, and they came to the Right. What are you doing sitting in there for that long? You're not your family. They're not going to let you sit in there. I don't care who you are. I'm not even going to say Jesse Jackson. Jesse.
that one thing that man can do is he can deflect a question like that and know what you're about to ask and deflect that too. <laughs> and they tell you, oh, you're gonna, oh, you said that because you're gonna lead into this. And then you're not. You're <laughs> not me. I remember when. The rule books tell you where to start and where to finish. But that's not the whole story. What are you going to do in between? What do you bring to the game? And how you leave it? Because there's always a finish line. And you can cross it. Or you can own it. What are you made of? What's your epic finish? One time, I think Tina Knowles was doing an interview. And he was in the background telling her, oh, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to say that. We're not going to have that. We're not going to talk about this on the phone. No. Matthew knows, knows what he's doing. But when it comes to a person like that, he can be very, very sneaky. And you have to be careful. Yeah, this is smart man. Yeah, Matthew knows what he's doing. I'm trying to tell y'all, he knows what he's doing. Um, he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. So, I think I really want to bring back the school of Matthew Lewis media training because he, he, inspired he inspired me and a lot of people need it. I know it's been like three years since I've done it, but some people need to go back. Let me ask you a question. In all honesty, and I'm not saying to be funny, would you ever have Matthew Lewis as your manager? After seeing his interview today on The Breakfast Club, and you get a better insight of him. If we have a great if he works out a great percentage with me, and he works the same way he did as for Beyonce and Kelly and Michelle, can you do that for me? Yes. Minus the sneaky stuff. Minus the sneaky stuff. I mean, at this point, he can't fuck up with nobody. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. And he also spoke of him working with Nas. I did not know that he managed Nas for a little bit, but they couldn't work out their agreement because... He wanted twenty percent from Nas, and Nas said he should get fifteen percent. He's like, my daughter paid me twenty percent, so there's no way I'm gonna get fifteen. I'm gonna get fifteen percent less than you, and you're not even my family. So he kept it real. Now that's one question he did not deflect. <laughs> I'm getting a stripper pregnant. We're not gonna talk about this. Oh no, we're not gonna have this conversation. No, we're not. And how did you ask that? Yeah, you didn't even say that. They had this little meter of Matthew. <laughs> they had this meter of Matthew like blowing up and then it going back down, then blowing back up, then going back down. I enjoyed it, man. He talked about he talked about why he used Beyonce's name. Just like a lot of you motherfuckers do out here that's media. Beyonce's name will make you click on some things and see what it's about. And that sometimes has nothing to do with her. Somebody could just say, oh, I love Beyonce. Janet Jackson says she loves Beyonce. That would be the friend. But this is the thing. Stop to think about it. Matthew Knowles was the originator of using Beyonce's name. Yeah. He got his daughter to that point in her career that you're so big now that they don't even call you Beyonce Knowles anymore. You're now on a one-name basis, Beyonce. We don't even say Beyonce Knowles anymore. Hell, we barely even say Beyonce Carter. I don't we know say, nobody that said Beyonce. We say Beyonce, and that's it. And Matthew made it so that his daughter would be on that. Man, you look. When it comes to great behind the scenes men and women, you can put Matthew Knows up there with people like Barry Gordy and Joe Jackson. Because look, look what they produce Barry Gordy, Diana, Diana Ross, and all these other famous people Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson, and Janet Jackson. Matthew Knows. Like, well, like, yeah, he talked. He's very, very smart man. He's <laughs> very sneaky, sneaky, sneaky man. Very, very smart. When it comes down to business, close that door, we're going to talk over there. Either you're going to give me 20, or I'm not working for you for Because I'm not taking 15. Mm -hmm. And my daughter gave me 20 percent. Right, and she's my daughter. I mean, her give me 20 percent. <laughs> Cause he's making all this money. Well, Matthew was trying to tell him mm -hmm. like he ain't going. If he's not, if this, if this money is still not flowing like that, mm -hmm. he didn't let you. Then know. What's up, yeah? Because what's up with these child support payments? 
Did, did say, they, didn't, they didn't talk about the other sons. They didn't talk about the younger children. Matthew they didn't talk about Beyonce and Solange. Matthew knows is doing this these interviews now because he's trying to get money for this book that he's coming out with. Mm-hmm. That's why he's doing it. Because maybe the money, well not maybe, the money ain't flowing like it used to be. I'm sure there's some checks that's still coming in, but they ain't coming in like they used to be. So now, somebody who was virtually silent for the past two years, now he's made his way back into one of the shadiest shows of all. The right, but I can't picture, I can't picture Beyonce just that her dad be flat broke. No, nobody's saying that he's flat broke, but he's just not making the money that he once did. You see what I'm saying? And when you're used to making a certain amount of money and you stop making that certain amount of money, you think that you're broke. <laughs> you, you feel me? You think that you're broke. Why? Because I'm no longer making the money that I was once making. For instance, for average Joe, if you're getting paid every two weeks, you bring home a check that's what? $1,500 on your check every two weeks. And then you get... You go, you get fired, and you go to a new job, and now instead of getting fifteen hundred, you're getting nine hundred dollars every two weeks. You gonna say, "Oh, I'm broke now." Oh, I'm broke. Oh, I'm broke. You know what I mean? So yes, I'm sure Matthew knows he got money coming in, but he ain't got the money he had when he was working with his daughter. Not at all. Not at all. No, 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 no. no. Let me show me was getting into it because. Matthew started telling each one of them about themselves, and he told Charlamagne he's insecure. Oh, everybody, let me tell you something. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I think that anybody with an ounce of common sense that didn't see Charlemagne being insecure, you're just as blind as Stevie Wonder. Somebody like Charlemagne, it, it, he just reeks of insecurity. And then you got to think about it. He, came, he comes from the same barn and stable that Wendy Williams kind of came from. Another insecure woman. I mean, hello, Wendy Williams has talked about her insecurities in the <laughs> They come from the same barn and stable. Yes, Charlemagne is so in- insecure. That's why he says and he does what he does, to deflect the situation from him. Just like when he was almost attacked outside the radio station a few years ago in front of camera, he flipped it and made it into a big joke. You know, but, in, but, you, but you knew that he was upset about it because now it's recorded. <laughs> and it's on film, so everybody can see. Like, come on. It wasn't a joke when he was running, but then he made it a joke when he got on the radio. Yeah. But this, you know, and then he was like, well, I ain't say nothing about you and you. I ain't making all of these kids and you cheating on your wife. I mean, mm. Joe man with it. Joe man with it for those couple seconds. We knew Matthew wasn't going to have that conversation. But he did the know your head, Joe man. He did. And for everybody else. Right. Nobody is never going to want to talk about the bad things in that life with nobody. Especially when it's your show and the guests come on and tell you about yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. I want to get this up so bad. I want you to get it up too. Excuse me. How do you get it up when you swap? It's been sitting there like, oh, uh, man. Uh-uh. But then when you spot it still sits there. Sorry, I had to get that out. So it was just it was just a great interview. I want y'all to watch it. No man, you ain't talk about all the dirty secrets. So what? He spoke about him as a businessman, what he did for his daughter, and what he's searching for when it comes to that talent. Him doing media training, him doing um, classes, and if you want to come to his classes, it's going to cost you a good penny, but you know what? I think that is worth it when it comes for Matthew Knowles because look what he's done for his daughter and Destiny Stroud. Mm-hmm. All three of them. Yeah, yeah. all of them. Very well. He is. And he wasn't the best when it came to Kelly and Michelle, but God damn it, I don't even think he was that great when it came to Beyonce. Mm-hmm. I think it was Beyonce's name and Beyonce's star power is what led her to so much bigger and better things, but don't think that Matthew knows he had a hand in none of that mm-hmm. behind her. He had a lot going on, but he didn't put, if he put as much time and effort into Kelly Michelle like he did Beyonce, they all would be like three big megastars, mm-hmm. and even though they're not megastars, I think they're happy with the lives that they live. And I, at least I can, I'll, at least I can say that, mm-hmm. because, you know, conversations I had. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, They're very successful. Yes, yeah, very they live very well and keep money, and, and they can walk money. these damn. Full point, full point. 
when Mikel and I were in, um, we went to see Michelle on Broadway. We walked the streets. She didn't need security. We walked these streets. And, you know, some people stopped and say, hey, I know who you are, such, 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 such. But can you imagine having to have a big bodyguard around you everywhere you go because people stop you? You can't go to the supermarket. You can't go to the mall unless you're in the disguise. I mean, it's okay to have some fame, but I wouldn't want it to be to that point. That's why they be saying you got to be careful about how much fame you want because sometimes it can be bigger than what you ask for. So, hey. But Matthew, you did a great job. Charlemagne, don't let Matthew know get on you like that. Don't, he, managers should really study how Matthew flipped that whole fucking interview and teach their artists. This is when you talk to a person like this, or when you get into a, a back into a corner that, this is how you deflect it. And if you can't deflect it in the interview, just shut the fuck up and don't do no interviews. Ask Beyonce. She is quiet. She don't say nothing to nobody. You make up a rumor, she'll post a picture to call you a liar. She is quick. She is I like that. She'll post a picture to call you a liar and go by her business. Yes. Call a liar, she'll post a picture. And that's it. So yeah, it was it was a fun interview. Um, and America's Next Top Model was canceled. Top said after 22 seasons, the show was canceled. I thought it was canceled about 10 years. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean I know back in the day, we used to have Top Model Tuesdays. Yeah. And Let me tell you something. When I was in school and, and Top watch. Model came on, that was the show. Okay. It really was. I think I was in middle school when it first came out. Wow, I'm But, you know, I think it should have been done long. Because that was when people really watched it. And that's when, when people really, really wanted to be on the show. Then we talk about America's Best Because really, everybody has some grandmas. Okay, everybody's my mom. <laughs>
The first one I'm going to tell you about is the life and crimes of what's her name? Uh, Doris, Doris, uh, Doris Payne. The life and crimes of Doris Payne. The, she was a jewelry thief. And I mean, she stole jewelry for decades. And this stuff is still getting locked up. But still, and she's in her 80s. Please watch her documentary. It's supposed to be a movie on her life with Holly Berry playing her, but things didn't fall through. She was very pretty when she was younger. I enjoyed her story. It was really good. And it's only 90 minutes. But the second movie, like this, remember I told you a couple weeks ago about Mississippi Dan. I watched it. And all the thing I'm going to tell you is this. If you want to learn how to beat a cycle, watch this movie. It was great from the beginning to the end. They had a lot of sad parts, but the movie was good. Me and my nephews, we watched it up here on um, on um, Tuesday night. It was really, really good. So y'all watch Mississippi Dam. Mississippi Dam, you're going to need some tissues watching that. And it's an independent film that came out six years ago. And I really wish that movies like that got I recognized by the Academy of Awards and things like that. But they never get Discover it's so many good independent films out there. So those are the two that I think you should check out. Do you have any suggestions? Oops. And Quantico. If you have Hulu, watch Quantico because that is good. That is real good. You want to talk about an FBI show? Something that's great. You can watch Quantico it comes on ABC. And if you like that riffraff, love the hip is on this Monday at night. But y'all have a great weekend. Hope to see y'all either at the AIDS Walk or at McKell's Church. Y'all have a safe weekend, and we'll see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>